2008 Nissan Pathfinder. Okay, so this is a Nissan Pathfinder. And our outdoor temperature is, you see right there, outdoor dry bullpen. It's 54 degrees outside. Well, it's not too cold of a morning. It's in about 9 o'clock right now. So this is a Pathfinder with rear air conditioning. And I actually did this one before because you can see my riding on uh, the pipe over there. And you see my sticker back in 2016. Uh, January 2016, I recharged this before. It's in a body shop, had an accident. With rear air conditioning, this has 850 grams. And this is another one where I whipped out the machine, I turned it on, then took out my cell phone to take uh, a video. I'm already into negative 20. I'm going into microns right now, as since I started this video. This recovery unit is so damn fast, it, there's not even words to describe it. So normally, if you had, say, remember the old RTIs that got bought out by uh, Wile, Wile, or whatever it is, and then you have Robin Airs, and then you might have a CPS, and uh, several other automotive air conditioning uh, recovery and recycle units. Well, this is recovery only. But if you're in a busy shop, say you're in the south or the midwest, somewhere where it gets 90, 100 degrees, you're in Florida, and you are an air conditioning shop, you know the new standards with the EPA to pull it down to negative 15 vacuum on recovery, and then the machine automatically turns off and you see if it rises. Well, all of you with experience in air conditioning know that when you're on the machine, and it's 30, 40, 50 degrees outside that a dual air conditioning system with the evaporator in the rear of the vehicle and the AC lines actually go down below the engine compartment, down below the floor and they run really low. They load up the refrigerant condenses into a liquid low down in the line. And then you have the evaporator and then it goes up into one of the rear quarter panels above the wheel usually unless it's one that goes all the way up to the ceiling like an old um oh the old gm's expedition not expeditions but um suburbans that used to have the rear mounted ac in the back but you have all that refrigerant that congregates in you got basically 20 feet of line set you got about 10 plus feet of line set going to the back and then you have 10 plus line set feet of coming to the front you usually have a accumulator on some of them and on the older ones and you have all that refrigerant that are accumulate in the accumulator and it would freeze up well on this unit within minutes you're pulling all the way down into the micron level not what the epa says is a minimum of 15 and hold a few minutes and if you have an automotive machine you know it sets it has to go by a timer see if it comes back up this is so fast and goes so deep you basically go into the micron level within minutes you don't even have to worry about coming back if you got into the micron level you have removed your refrigerants you don't even have to worry here i'll i'll turn off the recovery machine and watch our microns we're just sitting sitting pretty on a cold day now what you would want to do if you can start it when you do recoveries to speed up your recoveries on cold days is if the vehicle can be ran and it's been in action you got to make sure your fan is working you haven't lost any coolant or anything like that run your engine put it in defrost mode turn the heater on inside and by prior to you doing your recovery as you're driving your vehicle into the shop uh, to do any collision work or pull an engine ahead or whatever reason you have to move a fisher start up the vehicle warm it up by getting this engine hot and getting the radiator hot the radiator will put a radiant heat load on what refrigerant is inside the condenser thin. it helps it flash off and boil off really fast at the same time you will be heating up all these lines everything under the hood will be heated up by heating up the inside of the car in defrost mode you turn on the AC and you turn on the door flaps so they open up to the air conditioning evaporator 
and then it takes that cold dry air and you put it on recycle mode and what it'll do is as you're heating it up it'll take that hot air in the car run it over the evaporator from the evaporator go now it's dry cold air but then it goes over to heater core and then it goes up to your defrost and that's how you defrost because you're removing the moisture out of the air first but it's cold it goes through the heater core so by heating up everything in the car including your rear of the vehicle when you have dual ac when you come into the shop and you hook up to your recovery machine keeping the system on turn off your ac you don't want the refrigerant flowing at this time so disable the ac but keep the hot air flowing in the vehicle and under the engine perform your recovery with the engine running but the compressor off the ac has to be disabled because you don't want oil flowing in a flow and then pulling the oil out and you only pull out when you start from the low side because if you have a recovery unit hooked up and you have one where you can take the liquid on this indication right here and this exact spot this liquid line is after the compressor so you have the compressor so sometimes you have a high side fitting and it's located on the discharge of the compressor and it's going in the top of the condenser at that point you're mostly all vapor it's very rare that you're going to suck oil out of the system but it takes that and condenses it down and all the liquid sits in the bottom three or four or five rows after especially if you have one of the newer vehicles that have the receiver dryer on the side all the oil and the liquid refrigerant are retained right there and then they come up this liquid line that's going to go back and feed the expansion valve if you recover and i've seen this on some youtube videos with guys uh doing their youtube videos and they want to sell recovery machines and they put their amazon link on there and they don't even know what the hell they're doing and they hook up to the high side and, and they recover from the high side and they draw the liquid out now if you draw the liquid out from the high side you will be pulling a mass amount of oil from the refrigerant system so you won't just draw like nothing or say five milliliters if you have a refrigerant service valve that's located high up in the system not down on top of a compressor but high up in the system like this you're isolated from the compressor and the rest of the system from drawing out oil you can still get a little bit but you're basically isolated but if you come over here and you try to recover refrigerant out of the liquid line you will be removing a massive amount of oil with the refrigerant so that's a no-no and i see a lot of guys do that and the ac system will work after you recharge it the technician doesn't know he may have moved two or three ounces of oil instead of five or ten milliliters of oil especially here's one of the biggest things even on the low side when you have some of those general motor vehicles and they have the compressor mounted up high or the jeeps and they have the high side and the low side fitting mounted right on top of the compressor high side low side even if you recover from the low side when you drop the pressure in the system even with the automotive a regular automotive a lot of guys don't know this when you drop the pressure of the refrigerant it starts to boil it starts to bubble well on a lot of those gm and especially the sand in compressors the sand ins they have like two three four ounces of oil right in the bottom of the compressor and you're boiling and flashing that oil if i could turn that compressor clear and make it out of glass so you can see it you would literally see something that looks like whipping whipping cream you would see the refrigerant boiling up but the oil is getting cold and it's becoming viscous and it's bubbling up in it if you've ever seen any kind of oil released with a gas pressure and you've seen it bubble up into a thick froth think of whipping cream when you were a kid and you'd take whipping cream put it in your mouth or you'd spray it around it's literally coming up with the gas and getting sucked in the hose even on the low side right out of the compressor so a lot of compressor failures that i've seen over the decades this was explained to me by my dad before even high school that guys would do a recovery and they would get one of the ones where the service fittings are right on top of the compressor uh denzo had this hondas toyotas uh, some of the early models even in the old r12 days 
had fittings right down off the top of the compressor. And if you did a recovery off of them, you removed a whole lot of oil out of the refrigerant. And people would go to these quickie shops that would advertise cheap prices, $39, $69, whatever, with a little asterisk because they're going to charge you a butt more once they find something that's wrong or not wrong and still add more to the price. Um, they would do these recharge and recoveries, recoveries and recharges, where they hook up a machine, they hired an untrained kid, just teach them low side, blue, red, high side, push buttons on the machine, walk away, and it's done. Well, when the kid, or doesn't always have to be a kid, hook, did that exact same procedure on one of the GMs or the Chryslers or any vehicle that had the fittings exactly attached right to the top of the compressor on the hose manifold, the foam would foam up of the oil taking out the refrigerant and be sucked right down the machine. Most guys, a lot of them didn't even have the older machines that were good at measuring the oil. They didn't even know about measuring the oil that was purged out and they were supposed to add it back in. So they would remove a couple of ounces out of the system of oil as they did that recovery, recharge it. It would be nice and cold. Collect money from the customer go, hey, Mr. Customer, I did you a favor. We did a service, pay us, we recharge the system. Well, now that customer is going out missing a couple ounces of oil out of the system and the vehicle might last all through the summer or if it was the end of the summer but the compressor is slowly starving for oil running low on oil if you remember like an old bridge and stratton motor your lawn mower or your moped or a two cycle uh, motorcycle racing bike you had to mix gasoline with oil and it was like a 1 to 20 mixture, a 1 to 50 mixture, a 1 to 100 mixture of oil was mixed in to the gasoline of your two-stroke engine. For you who've owned two-stroke engine, when you're a kid, if you ever remember that one time you forgot to mix the gas into oil, you remember that the engine ran fine for a little while, but then it seized up. The cylinder seized to the piston because of the lack of oil mixed with the gasoline refrigerant and oil is the exact same thing there's a ratio say a three percent six percent nine percent whatever ratio of oil per weight and if it doesn't have that it will work for a while but the compressor will burn up later on and so when i get these cars in later on into a mechanical shop and i especially when i see the ones and they give me the old receipt of, yeah, last year I went to so-and-so quickie uh, lube shop or Joe Blow or Mr. Air Conditioning something down the block. I will see he has one of the compressors that has the two fittings. And they'll say, yeah, he hooked up his machine, he recovered, he recharged. And now I have a burnt up compressor a year later. But they usually don't figure that that recharge had anything to do with it because it was a year later. But when I take the system apart... The compressor, when I turn it down, upside down, will have no oil in it. When I go to the evaporator, usually if you ran low on charge, your evaporator will get loaded with oil. Blow through the evaporator, almost no oil comes out. Blow through the condenser, no oil comes out. Blow through the receiver dryer, the accumulator, or if you're replacing the accumulator or the receiver dryer, you drill a hole in the bottom of the accumulator that you're going to replace, stand it up, and let the oil drip out measure. Almost no oil comes out. Well, if you have no leaks in the system, no big leaks, nothing leaking oil, and this customer has gone to his friendly neighborhood automotive shop who once or twice did a standard service on the air conditioning where they hook up the machine, attach to those two fittings on top of the compressor, recovered out refrigerant, put refrigerant back in, they re removed a lot of oil, that's where you get the ticking time bomb. You have a compressor that's going to fail in a year, 18 months, two months. When you take it apart, check for oil everywhere and you'll see that there's very little oil. You, if you had a six ounce or a seven ounce system, you might notice there's only three or four ounces in the system. This is a real common failure. Uh, lack of education, no knowledge, no reading, and usually is not taught. When that, say, Robin Air or White or RTI or Whale Guy 
he doesn't tell you because he's he's just a salesman and he's selling you a machine and many of the times they can't when there's a problem they only know how to sell the machine and work the machine they don't even know how to diagnose a bad ac problem so they'll just show your guys especially if you're a body shop how to hook up press buttons walk away maybe add this universal one type of oil fits all kind of thing and, and oil universal oil that's another subject that for another day another topic for another video about universal oil but they'll just teach you guys how to do a recovery and recharge make money go they collect their money and go and you collect money from customers because your guys just know hook up hoses press buttons and that's all there is to it there's more to it than that uh, a little bit on, on the universal oil for refrigerant that is being sold. Think of this. How about that universal transmission fluid? That stuff's great, isn't it? How about the universal power steering fluid? Or the universal brake fluid? Or how about any universal fluid? Can you think universal coolant? How about that one universal green coolant that could go into everything? So what the hell makes somebody think that there's actually really a universal refrigerant oil? If you had any idea of the different materials and the different modes of operation that the different type of air compressors need different oils for specific reasons, yes, you can put something in universal and yes, the car will go. I could put 020 engine oil in a 1960 one ton Chevy 350 pickup truck. Will it start? Yes. Will it drive away? Yes. Will it get 200,000 miles? I think we know the answer to that is no. I could put old green universal coolant in a new Toyota or a new Chrysler. Drain it, take out the long life, five years, 150,000 mile orange coolant or whatever coolant, put the green coolant in. Put tap water, walk, tap it off 50-50 with your tap water and your universal green fluid. Will the car start? Yes. Will the shop collect money? Yes. Will the customer drive away? Fine. Yes. What will happen to that heater core, the head gasket, the radiator in two or three years? Sometimes less. Or, or freeze plugs. What will happen with that universal coolant in there? Any of us who are educated know the answer to that. But yes, you did collect money, you put a universal coolant in there, and the customer did drive away. Same goes with power steering fluid. If any of you have ever made the mistake of using some of the universal power steering fluids on some cars, and then within a week or a month had leaky power steering uh, seals on the rack, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know you were the cause of your customer's rack problems, and sometimes it takes months or a year, before the problem happens then either you're brand new in this industry or you have no education okay so the universal shit gotta go universal power steering let's take those old rolls royce that used the green mineral oil with the seals that they had and let's stick universal today's dot three or dot four oil in an old system that had mineral oil now let's go the other way let's take that mineral oil that was used on the old Bentleys and let's take it into a new Chrysler or a new Toyota or a new GM mineral oil into the brake fluid reservoir for you who've been in this industry a long time you know what's going to happen for those who have no education well let's say it's going to be a really bad day for you and that customer that's it for today um, absolutely sets the gold standard of anything that has to be uh, done for recovery there is no other machine in this category that pulls refrigerant out like this machine does talk to you guys later